I want to update you on the progress on building trucks. So I set up an assembly line to build four more trucks. It's kind of a lot of work, but the assembly line uh, definitely improved the operation so that I could put out four at one time. So here, here's an overview of how this truck actually works. So we have the gear tower and it is, has a copper strip laminated on it and wheels with the uh, phosphor bronze nut. The nut fits in the socket but it has a ton of up and down play to it. So the wheels have independent suspension and hopefully that means they're far more reliable. Now what I did was I had to laminate two pieces of plexiglass, uh, 1 16th plexiglass together, so that the inside has the sockets for the pins, or for the shafts, for the gears. And they fit in here. And then the outside one has those blocked off so that they stay in here. Then the outside one has two sockets where we will design and build the side frame after we get them all together and that'll fit on two pins right there and what I did one of the things I did was I changed from using super glue and baking soda to, to laminate this strip on here I went with plyo bond which is a contact cement that you can you know, plyo bond got it at Lowe's I think what you can do with that is you just apply some with an exacto knife all along the edge here. And I, I bent the piece first, then I put the plow bond on. And then as I'm locking it down in here, I take my soldering pencil and I touch it with the heat and it instantly cures it. Now I just have to file off the edge out here. And that's no big deal. All the gears are set up. I produced all at one time the piece of the oyster tin that's used to uh, for the um, cover on the bottom. I also produced all at one time the top piece that is used for the pintle. So here is, here's a frame. And what I did this time, instead of JB welding a pin in there, I drilled a hole, countersunk it, and I put in one of these tiny screws. And I'll probably just lock that down with something, maybe plow bond. And that way it just doesn't come out. It doesn't have to be super strong or nothing because it just has to fit in here. And so far, we're looking pretty good. This will make 15 inch radius. That's, that's one of our standards is 15 inch radius. So that's kind of where we're at. I cut all at one time the worm shafts for the worm gear. And then I have started threading a rod. So I, I remember I made that little that little uh, piece of aluminum with a socket for the the thread cutter in it. And each one of these will get a section of threaded rod for the idler. As I found out before, um, it's important. See, the idler goes through this socket, so it you can't just you can't just put a pin in there and hold it because it'll come out. So what I did on these, as you can see, is I put the threaded rod through there and the other fits on here, no problem, it spin freely. And then I put a nut on each end and then I just put drop drop a super glue on there so it doesn't come off and that's pretty good. And, and in threading these rods, what you want to do is once you get them threaded, you don't want to cut them all the way off and use them right away. You want to keep threading until you got as much as you can because it's way easier to thread something that's already started than starting from the beginning. It's hard to get it started. But once you do, it's very easy to cut threads. And then we're good to go. So the trucks are ready. I'm going to have to solder on a little piece. A little copper strip here. What I did also is I used a rotary cutter to make strips. That'll go on the side here, come up to the top, get joined here, and that's where we'll put our wires. And that's where we're at. We're in really good shape. Everything's looking good. I can't wait to wire this thing up and try it.